Welcome, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and I'm joined once again by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today? I'm doing great, Pete. Living the dream. How about yourself, sir? I'm doing all right, man. It's a busy time, but um, I'm happy to be here, and we're going to have an interesting discussion today, I think, about something that um, is probably on a lot of hiring managers and HR professionals' minds. Can you guess what it might be? Um, pay. Not pay. Okay. <laughs> oh, not, hold on. Not right, today. Hold on. I'll get there. I'll get there. Free pizza on Fridays. Free pizza on Fridays. We are Planet Fitness, and, and that's what we do. It, <laughs> that's a Tuesday, by the way, for Planet Fitness. It, it is okay. Tuesday. <laughs> the only day you go to the gym. Yeah, right? <laughs> also known as your workout day. Uh, absolutely. Every Tuesday, you get free Papa John's. Man, I, I we should send them a bill for this. Is that actually – they give donuts some one day, don't they? Do they? I don't know. I'm making that up. I have no. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? What a great. Here we go off topic. What a great business model, right? This is what keeps them coming back. Exactly. <laughs> keeps them coming back. So, excellent. I like that we're yeah. off topic and we haven't even defined what started. our topic is. No. <laughs> That's us, awesome, man. But but we do have a topic, and our topic is boomerang employees. Are they good to hire back, or should you avoid it? And I'm hoping that talking through this, both on a theoretical plane as well as our own personal experiences. I, I hope we can come up with a conclusion. I'm not sure we will, but I was hoping that we could talk through the pros and cons and kind of look at it from every angle and, and see what we think after a healthy discussion. How's that sound? Absolutely great, because that is a very timely topic with everything happening in the workforce today. So absolutely. Yeah. So boomerang employees, for anyone who doesn't no, it's, um, it's exactly how it sounds. It's an employee who's left an organization and then comes back, just like a boomerang. And we're seeing that happen with frequency right now in the market, starting with COVID, the great resignation kicking in. And now we're seeing, well, we've seen a lot of what I consider to be unnatural corporate hiring. And, and what, I, what I mean by that is that we've seen companies hire, ramp up their, their staff um, and pay wages significantly higher than they were used to paying, perhaps significantly higher than they would pay under normal conditions. I'm not sure what normal is at this point, yeah. but we've seen huge increases in ramped up hiring in HR in particular. So being in staffing, we see that uh, as in prevalent fashion that companies are, uh, corporate entities are ra uh, ramping up their HR departments, ramping up their recruiting teams. But now things are starting to slide a little bit in the other direction. We're seeing layoffs in the past couple of weeks. And it's not making as much um, noise in the press as it probably should, but Carvana laid off 2,500 people. I saw that. Meta, Facebook is has put a hiring freeze in place. Uh, there's a couple other examples. It seems that I'm reading every time I pull up Twitter of companies um, you know, either freezing or downsizing, whatever you want to call it. But the tide is, is shifting a little bit. So now a lot of the employees who left for what they thought would be greener pastures, realizing either by their own choice or their, their new employer's choice that wasn't so green are trying to come back to their former jobs and former employers. So we're going to talk about whether that's a good idea for the companies to take them back. So um, what, what's your take on that just uh, at a high level? Hey, Pete, at a high level, and, and, and look, it's somebody who's been in HR for about 20 plus years, uh, it's, I kind of smell this and kind of saw this coming because there was a huge ramp up in, in turnover. Turnover, you know, with the big, with the great resignation is still a big relevant topic these days and people leaving left and right. It's happening at such a breakneck speed that I don't know if either the candidates or the recruiters who are hiring them or the organizations who are saying fill positions, fill positions, fill positions, if they're really taking the, the time to stop and realize, wait a minute, why are we filling these positions so quickly? Why are we ramping up so fast and why are we not do this, doing this gradually? I mean, that's just me as, as, as a Monday morning quarterback <laughs> with this right now, because it's, it's, I'm noticing it, you're noticing it, and I have a lot of clients who are noticing that as well. Right. So, yeah, I agree with you. This is something that's happening right now. There's there's two parts to to a boomerang when they leave your hands. Then when it comes back. That's right. <laughs> right. And the question is, are you going to receive it back if, if it's a good idea or not? And 
I don't know. It really depends on why they left and how they <laughs> So left. you should duck when it comes <laughs> yeah, back, right? Maybe. Just if that's coming way faster than what I send it, duck and done. <laughs> well, all right. So let, let's let's talk through the pros and cons and see how we feel at the end. So pros. I'll, I'll, I'll throw the first one out there. Sort of an obvious uh, layup. You're, you're, you have a chance to hire back an employee who already has trained, knows your systems and processes, whatever those might be, and can hit the ground running. A known quantity, if you will, mm-hmm. who is um, you know, who's, who's productive from day one. So that's a pro and a pretty big one. It's a pretty compelling reason because if an employee leaves under good circumstances and they, they resign the right way, they give two weeks notice, they work hard until the end. They don't burn bridges. Now, I say all of those things, by the way, as if they should be a given. They're far from a given. We've yeah, talked about that already. Yeah, we did. However, it's a good time to point out they should be a given. That, that, that no matter you know, um, what you think the moment you walk out the door or you decide to leave, just just zoom out a little bit. Look forward and and consider how you want to be thought of and talked about um, on the other side of that decision, the same way the employer should behave, right? They, you know, just because an employee resigns, you know, there's no reason to not, you know, to treat them professionally and with courtesy every step of the way, because you want to always part on good terms. So we know that, but it, but it's, right. it warrants saying, because I think a lot of people right now who've left under bad circumstances are probably regretting that departure yeah. right now because they didn't expect to be looking backwards um, and seeing that those pastures they left, you know, were, were maybe green after all. But so if all that's in place, so a candidate who's left or an employee who's left, who comes back um, ready to go, that's not a bad thing, is it? It's not a bad thing. I mean, if, if we welcome them back, it really isn't a bad thing. Now, it's it, it's let's let's I'm I'm gonna think like like a recruiter right now, or better yet, a hiring authority, somebody in charge of the talent acquisition process. Why don't you think like the owner of the business? How about that? There we go. The owner. That's right. The that's one right. who's ultimately, <laughs> you know, who who's t- who's you know, and I think of this not to interject too much, but I think of that all the time with with um, Four Corner Resources Staffing Company as the owner of the business. I'm the only one who's not leaving. So every day I have to think. <laughs> Am I creating an environment that people want to be in, that they see um, future growth opportunities in? Can they thrive here? All of those things, uh, because I know every day someone has a decision when they get up in the morning, are they going to spend their time working for organization or are they going to do quite literally anything else? And so that's a decision that has to be made every day. So I always think, well, I'm the only one that's not leaving. Right, or that can't leave. I hope I'm not the only one that isn't leaving, but I'm the only one that can't leave. So everyone else is kind of here by choice. So anyway, back back to that. So if you think like the business owner, you're really getting to the truest of the answers, in, in my opinion, in a situation like this. Agreed. So with the business owner hat on, what I would think first is, okay, from, from, from my perspective, 30,000 feet up, I'm looking down and I, I want to have a conversation with the recruiter first. Here's where I will want to have a conversation with the recruiter because I know how stressful it is for recruiters these days, right? There's a lot of positions open. To, to, there's a lot of positions changing hands these days. And recruiters are stressed. I completely understand that. I don't want the presence of stress to be the reason we take the path of least resistance to bring somebody back. I don't want that to be the only reason, right? Because exactly exactly like the pro you just said, it's just easier to bring the person back on. Yes, they may have those credentials, but there isn't that much ramp up time you go into need for the person to get used to the processes of that organization. Yeah, they got a great skill set, but do they know the culture? Do they know the key players? Do they know the stakeholders? And you plug that hole relatively quickly if you bring somebody else who's used to that. What I don't want to do, I don't want my recruiters to let that be the only reason we welcome somebody back just because it's easier. It's got to be the right person with the right skill set at the right time for the right job. Okay, so I I, I want to change what I said a little bit because I, I jumped in and shouldn't have, and I said something that after a little thought, um, which is hard to do sometimes on the fly when we're we're having this podcast because it's yeah. it's not scripted. Mm-hmm. 
it, we shouldn't just look at it from the perspective of the business owner. And, and you are hundred percent correct in saying that you should look at the recruiter who has their own set of considerations. And, and we're talking about a corporate recruiter in this instance who uh, needs to fill the job. They're motivated to fill the job. As you said, they may feel pressure to fill the job if the clock's ticking and, and the market has been super tight. So in the, in favor of candidates. So filling any job has been a challenge these days. So they may concede. I think that's what you're, uh, or make concessions, right? That yeah. they perhaps shouldn't make. And then you have the, the, the actual manager's perspective, the person who has to live with that hire, who should be weighing in on the decision. And then somewhere down the line, you do have the business owner, depending on the size of the organization. But I think that is not necessarily the person who um, we should consider first in this scenario. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, easiest. I was very <laughs> self-serving on my part to say that, but not, uh, not, not necessarily the most important perspective in this instance. Well, you know, it, that's why whether it's the recruiter, the hiring authority, the person in charge of the talent acquisition process or the business leader, they all need to be in the same sheet of music to see who we welcome back or we just hire on, whether it's somebody brand new off the street, I hate to say it that way because then on the street, you know what I mean, or just somebody who was here in the past, right? Because again, if I see somebody who I'm like, oh, they were here a year ago, my biggest thing is what changed? What changed, right? I will have to take a look at why they left to begin with, right? And then when they come back, I will want to ask them what changed? Why, okay, so why would you like to come back then? So let's let's explore that a little bit, but let's assume, as I did, that nothing has changed in terms of the need still being what it was when this person resigned, and you you liked them then, right? Because if if yeah. this you know, person chose um, to leave versus being asked to leave, that's entirely different. Yep. But if they chose to leave, and you, you know, the the employer, you know, they were in good standing. At the time, they're coming back. There's no reason to think they that would change. Um, on the surface, do you like the idea of bringing back someone versus hiring an employee off the street, so to speak? <laughs> it depends on who it is. I'm going to be honest, Pete. It, it really depends on who it is. It's it's. Well, what are the factors? So so, so so run through that. Here's the thing. Look, it, it's I'm just, I'm just going to be really brutally honest with you. Or no necessarily honest because we went through a training a few months ago where i explained the difference between brutally honest and necessarily honest so <laughs> i'm, I'm going to use that training there uh, pete no so i'm going to be necessarily honest here um if somebody it, it, every organization has their power players every organization has their middle 70 percent and every organization has their bottom 15 percent who you know what they're doing okay they're not really motivated to just do just enough more that yet yeah, just enough not to get fired right everybody every, every organization has that when that person leaves i'm not gonna lie there's a celebration in the office <laughs> right okay. the, people celebrate yes finally they're gone because sometimes you know it's it's it, it's um it's you kind of have your hands tied behind your back because look they're doing okay they don't necessarily have a good relationship with the culture of the organization and they decided to self-eject if I have somebody like that, I'm, I'm going to be really reluctant to bring them back on. I really am, right? Because I want somebody, yes, who's got the skill set necessary to, to, to take the organization from A to B. But to me, more importantly, they have to have the chemistry with the rest of the team. They have to live and breathe the uh, culture of the organization. And that's, 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 the, the, that's the level in which I measure people on whether I welcome them back or I hire them off the street. So if I use a different way of phrasing that, would it be appropriate to say you wouldn't hire back the people you probably should have terminated? Uh, anyway? Yes, sir. Now, not that we want to go down that road too much, yeah. but I think, yeah. Yeah, I think every organization experiences that. And this yeah. is not to, to, to be critical of that decision because, you know, I'd have to look inward first and I can mm -hmm. tell you that I'm certainly guilty of allowing, um, that bottom 15% of employees at times to linger. But I, I think it's also um, a good lesson when you, if you don't, if you're not willing to hire someone back who did leave under good circumstances, provided the need's still there for the role that they could fill and everything else being equal. And then you say, yeah, but I don't, I don't want them. Well then, you know, you should, I think it's worth asking yourself and your, whoever's involved in the organization, well, why did we let them stay in the first place? 
That great question. No, seriously. That's the question. convenient and easy thing yeah. to do, and I think it's probably that probably happens a lot. Well, you know, it, it's uh, from an HR point of view, I get asked that question quite a bit, Pete. You know, it's um, it, it's somebody who doesn't work the way the business leader wants that person to work, but they're not working bad enough where it warrants a separation conversation. That's a little limbo area, <laughs> right? right? That that we have to be aware about, right? Because look, it, it's it's sometimes if somebody's performing just the way they are, that's fine. They're doing the job that you're paying them to do. Um, if they go below that, that's when you have to take that action, right? But if they're just not keeping up with the rest, in my opinion, it, it's it's all right, nothing's gonna change. I'm not gonna bring that person back. And for everybody listening, at the very least in the state of Florida, because in the state of Florida, it is an employment at will state, which by the way, I learned last week, did you know, Pete, how many states in the United States are employment at will? I'm gonna say one. No. One? 20. You are, you are 48 off. <laughs> Okay. Well, you, the way you presented that, I thought you were you, you, you were tricking me. I thought no, because I thought I thought I almost all of them. Because I, I I don't. I mean, unless you're a union employee, I, I don't understand. I'm not familiar with restrictions yeah. on why an employer could let someone go. So I, I thought can't. it was a trick question. I clearly <laughs> did not. No, it wasn't. Interpret that right. It baffled me too. I was at a conference last week over in Maryland, and one an employment labor, an employment and labor law attorney, Christine uh, Walters. Uh, she got up and she started doing a great presentation about employment at will. And she asked to your crowd, "How many of you, how many employment at will states are there?" And I'm like, 15. And everybody like four. And I'm like five. She's like, forty nine. <laughs> no one said one. And I'm like, nobody said one. Well, you did. <laughs> That's why I wasn't at the HR conference. <laughs> Dude, it was, it, it's 49. So who's, who's the one then that? Montana. Wait, Montana, <laughs> the freest state of all in, yeah. in my mind is. Montana has, now I'm paraphrasing because I was shocked. I'm like, what, Montana? She's like, this is not a trick question, exactly how you said. Um, she's like, Montana has a rule or a law, a statute that says an employer needs to have a reason needs to have a reason of why they're going to separate employment from an employee. Wow. Now, everybody else, HR tells them you give them a reason because you don't want them to, you know, make something else up, but they have to give a reason. If you don't have a reason, you cannot terminate. And I'm like, I did not know that. I'm going to go back and talk to my students. I'm going to go back and talk to Pete about this. Yeah, <laughs> that's that was wow. news to me. So I would love to see a list of the reasons. You know, how, how strict are they, right? I mean, because that's... I'm going to look that up. I mean, I think of Montana without having lived there, I visited there quite a few times. Um, and it's a place that I wouldn't mind living one day, but that um, I, I'm surprised that they would have those sort of restrictions because I see them as almost an you know, anti-big government uh, you know, state. And that's a very invasive thing for the government to decide <laughs> who, who you, you know, what, whether you're... Um, your reason for terminating employees justified. It, it's that's why right. to me it was so off left field because again Montana really out of all the states of that one, I'm thinking maybe New York California yeah no, Montana right. of course everybody said California which state California almost everybody raised their hand right <laughs> right so man we went really right field so look we're gonna by the way if you're li yeah. if you're listening California yeah. <laughs> maybe you should change your rep yeah man you're Montana really sure. you're doing a pretty good job <laughs> of fooling everyone. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so yeah, we are way off topic. So so we're we're let's bring it back and well he, here's what I was saying. Here's what I was saying. Here's where I brought that up, right? I want everybody to know this. Just because people apply for your job, it doesn't mean you have to hire them. Because a lot of people have this misconception that if somebody leaves and they come back and they apply, well, we've he worked here, he or she worked here in the past they have this weird feeling that they have to hire them back. Folks, you don't. At the end of the day, in the state of Florida, in an employment at will state, you are able to hire whoever you want and you're able not to hire whoever you want so long as it's done fairly and it doesn't violate EEOC laws. That's it, right? So I, I wanted to say that piece and that's what we went off on a tangent with employment at will. I wanted to say that because um, I don't want people to feel compelled to or not to hire somebody if they don't want to so long as they're doing it the right way especially the people who you know, and they're coming back. Right, okay, so yeah. 
free will, right? No, no, no restrictions. It's all about whether it's a good idea. Correct. Okay. So it's a known quantity, right? The person's a known quantity. You know what you're getting, you know, the good and the bad. And that's, that's an attractive thing where this, you know, fictitious employee off the street that we're now going to go bring to them as it's a crap shoot yep. where I would say, Hmm, you know, the devil, you know, sort of, sort of premise where, okay, you know, maybe let's just go through it for fun. We, we decided that D and F employees, we should have terminated already and definitely shouldn't hire back. Is that fair? Got it. That's fair. Okay. Right. Um, an A employee, you know, your top person in the department, uh, uh, leaves, you know, to, to pursue a role again, under good terms, any reason not to hire that person back culturally, they're a good fit. It's going to improve morale. Everyone's going to be happy to see this person come back. Would you hesitate to bring back your, an A player who left? It would depend on how they left. They left they in keep... the best possible way, Ricky. They oh, humor yeah. me with that. They, they left. Okay. They said, I'm going to give you a month's notice. If you'd like it, I will work you know, 50 hours every week uh, during that yeah. period. And you know, you had a tear in your eye practically when you saw them <laughs> the door, right? I mean, this person did everything right. So I, I would bring them back. Here's why. If I know all those factors, they left the the right way. They were an amazing employee. They did everything in their power to make sure that they help us in the transition process, right? They didn't burn the bridge. They actually reinforced it, right? I would welcome that person back versus a person off the street because a person off the streets, and I, I got I gotta come up with a different name for that. Somebody who I don't know, let's just say that. Somebody who I don't know, um, I don't know what I'm getting with them above and beyond their cover letter, interview, and resume. I don't know what I'm getting. Whereas the person who left, I know their cover letter, resume, interview, how they work, their kids, what their favorite color is, all these things. It's just an easy plug-in. So absolutely, I would bring that person back if all those factors are met. Okay, so let's. All right, so there's our A player, and of course, yep. we're gonna we're gonna bring them back. Yeah. B player. Yeah, this is someone who you know does their job really well. They they go you know typically go above and beyond. They gave a typical two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. They uh, were drama free, so you do know that yeah they're not gonna cause any any trouble. Um, you know, kind of that next level down. They're not the best, but they're better than average, right? I think we can call that a B. Back What's in your hesitation previous, there? Two jobs ago, just, just, just real quick, two jobs ago, we had a name for that for somebody drama-free. Delta Foxtrot. That's what we call somebody who was drama-free. Hey, I got one, two, three, four, five uh, candidates, all Delta Foxtrots. People are like, what are you talking about? It's like drama free. You don't get it. Get on my team. <laughs> right. <laughs> drama free. Yeah. Right. That's and that's, point. that's, listen, that's, that is not insignificant. No, it's not. It, it's, we take a look. I take a look at that. Right. So this is a B player left perfect. Right. Still, still to me, a B player, I know them better than the people that I don't know. I will still bring them back, to be honest. Okay. All right, now so it's going to get dicey. Now, so we, we know what we're doing with the A's and B's. We know what we're doing yep. with the D's and F's. Yep. So now the C player, and it, let's even call him a C plus for fun, where this person is getting meets expectations from top to bottom on their review. <laughs> right? They're not exceeding anything. They certainly aren't a superstar, but they are doing the bare minimum consistently, head down. You know, and maybe every once in a while they, you know, you have to tell them to pick up the pace a little bit, right? Yeah. But certainly not what anyone would consider to be a problem, right? How do you view that one? So this is me and me talking, right? Because I, I like to take risk, I think, right? It, it's, it's I, I, my risk tolerance is pretty high. At that point, in my opinion, I don't know. I kind of want to see what's out there, right? So I in poker terms, I think of this person as a pair of jacks. If you're playing hold them. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a pair of jacks, uh, uh, you know. The... Dude, I'm horrible at poker. Okay. <laughs> he used the wrong reference with me. Okay. Well, it's, it's just a reference. If it's just a hand when it, where you start with, a, you know, you open with that, you're playing hold them, then you go, oh, this is, I just know this is, there's so many better things out there, but it's, but it's far from the worst either. 
So a draw four and Uno. Okay, I got it. <laughs> no, no, that's bad. That's, a, that's bad. That's right. I don't even know how to play Uno. Look at that. Yeah, Pete. No, that's no, definitely not a draw four and Uno. But but not, <laughs> but it's you're saying I'd rather have I'd rather roll the dice, take a mm. chance with um, that person off the street, than hiring a um, you know an average top to bottom average person because. I think what you're saying is, you know, the organization's not going to improve that way. They're just going to stay where it already is. So it, it's now I may have a different answer in a different t- a point in time. Right now, there's a lot of talent out there. Right. And, and but we have to, you know, kind of fight for that talent because, you know, prices are getting kind of a high these days. Right. But in an environment where it's 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 unemployment is extremely high. I can't find anybody. Yeah, I'll give that C player a shot to come back. Well, I, I, well, see, I, I well, I mean, the market where we are in the space where we operate, there's not a lot of talent out there. I, I would say this is and now that may change based on what we're seeing, but unemployment in Florida in the you know the in professional roles where we operate, I would say is is non-existent. You know, it's as close to zero. You see it that way? Because because I see that there's talent out there. It's just way too expensive. Just like gas. There's a lot of gas out there. It's just like $5 <laughs> a gallon these days, right? Well, <laughs> it's just way too expensive. Well, you know, that that's its own discussion, right? Yeah. When you think of, you know, the market dictates salaries. To me, I, I've always viewed it that way. I don't think employers should dictate salaries. I think the market. Agreed you know, has to do that. You have to look at the conditions and the opportunity, the competition, you know, because, you know, the employers, the obligation is on the employers to pay what will attract the talent they need at any given time. Right now, it it is, and this is an objective statement, I believe, um, it is a time where, you know, in professional roles, certainly in the Southeast, I, I can't really account for, the Northeast or places that have lockdowns because I don't spend as much time thinking about the job markets there. And I'm certainly not as firsthand involved as, as I am, you know, from Florida outward. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's an employee's market as strong as it's ever been. I just see the tide turning a little bit, not, not greatly yeah. yet, but we see signs. We see bits and pieces as I, as I was saying at the beginning of the show. So, um, Right now, I think it's happening in large part, this, this idea of bringing back employees because the market's so tight, because you know, recruiters, hiring managers, whoever is involved are making decisions. Do I want to bring back this okay level employee um, yeah. or do I want to wait for a great employee? Hopefully, as we've talked about, you don't know if the employee you're hiring cold is going to be great. Um, so that's a tough a tough decision, but I definitely see it as, as an employee's market still. I yeah. see. So, so I see that as well. I, I think we're saying the same thing just a little bit differently because it's to me, you know, when somebody decides to come back, which I, which I have seen that the big question I would have and anybody would have is why are you coming back? And here it, with the few amount of people that I've, I've been able to have a conversation with about this and people who boomerang back, what happened now at first they're like oh well the market and money and then once i really broke down those barriers they really told me the real reason look i was just stressing my job i wanted something new something new came up i jumped on it and then i quickly realized that was not the job for me and i didn't have the value instilled in me of the previous organization i didn't realize how lucky i how good i had it there until i left and sometimes you know, you don't know what you, what you've got till it's gone. <laughs> There's a saying that's a saying for a reason. Yeah. So so once it's gone, then you tend to see that value. But then here's the other thing. I was talking to a few people last week about this, about onboarding and bringing people on board. And I think we talked about this over at uh, at uh, Four Corners in downtown in some of the training classes. You know, when somebody decides to jump ship from one organization to the other. I don't care how great the interview went. I don't care how good you feel about that organization. There's something in the back of your head that still gives you doubt on whether you're doing the right decision or not. Sometimes that voice gets louder as soon as you start because they, they, they don't have everything in order as far as new employer orientation is concerned. Sometimes it's faint, but the voice is still there. 
And what I tell people who are bringing people on board, the, you know, people conducting new employee orientation, those leaders, I tell them, your job from here on forward is to shut that voice up, is to prove that voice wrong. That's what I tell them. Sometimes they do a horrible job at that and people say, you know what, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. They start making phone calls, sending uh, Facebook messages. Hey, I miss you guys. I mean, they don't say it that way, but they start asking other people to see if uh, if uh, if it's okay, whether they could just come to you directly. But yeah, it's, it's they start making those phone calls to start coming back. But I think the people I have, I have spoken to, Pete, um, it has been because they made a decision too quickly and they really didn't think about how good they had it in comparison to an organization that you don't really know how they really are. Yeah, I, I was talking uh, about turnover to our internal team last week a little bit and mm -hmm. I've quit every job except for the one I have now. So mm -hmm. it would be hypocritical of me to say that that's a bad thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it resigning from my former employees, it made me a bad person. I don't think it made me a bad employee. I don't think it made me disloyal to the organization. I think in each case, I, there was something that for whatever criteria I was applying at the time, I wanted you know to do more of, right? I wanted to be in that new role versus the one I was in, whether it was, you know, the, the job itself, the, the opportunity, the income, whatever it might be. And I, don't want anyone internally to be an employee who doesn't want to be part of the organization. I think pretty much any yeah. company would say that. Yep. But I also don't mind the thought of someone going out and trying to serve themselves better, trying to find a greater opportunity for themselves. It would be hypocritical for me to begrudge anyone that, especially when I'm someone who left a job to start my own business. And I remember some of the comments made at the time were, um, you know, were skeptical in nature um, you know, of people, you know, who I, 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 things I heard secondhand. And it was less than, um, you know, encouraging and optimistic for, for my chances to go do what I was going to do. Um, but I always assumed if, if when I left that if it didn't work out, there's no reason why they wouldn't welcome me back. Um, now I didn't intend for that to happen. I was committed to it not happening. Fortunately, I didn't, I didn't have to find that out, but I always thought as the employee myself, which I used to be, you know, I did a great job while I was here. You know, I was promoted. I was rewarded. I, I advanced. Um, if I choose to come back, I would assume they would welcome me with open arms. But I also realized having been in the position I'm in now for almost 17 years and talking to so many companies about their own hiring practices, that is not a universal feeling that, that wow. there are many people and organizations who draw a hard line and say, nope, if you didn't want to be here, we don't ever want to consider bringing you back. And I, I find that strange, for lack of a better way to put it. So a blanket statement like that, I don't know why people do that. I don't know, right? Because I agree and disagree with that because I have a different feeling for A and B players and different feelings for C and below players, <laughs> right? So obviously different feelings, but you know, it, it's, and this is probably a good segue, Pete, to talk about um, for those, those, those business leaders listening right now, what should we do in case you cannot, what you do so far right now, it doesn't keep somebody with you, right? And people still feel compelled to leave. What should you do if they're a performer? and everybody loves them, they do a great job for you, and you, you've had a great relationship, man, roll out the red carpet. Seriously, roll out the red carpet, get them a cake, wish them well, half party. I, I believe that the more you praise, so, well, it's not praise, it's thanking people. Thank you for the service you gave us. Best of luck, keep me posted, let's stay in touch, right? You leave that door open, right? Now, that could be positive, or that could be negative. That could be positive, obviously, right? Because, you know, the person knows they can come back. That could be negative as well, depending on the person, because they can go not give it their best. They may get fired, might not get fired because they didn't do a good job. They went into it kind of C-level-ish when they were A player for you because they know they got a safety net back with us. Well, I mean, it, it's what do you do there? Well, so let me, let me, let me build on that a little bit yeah. because, you know, we don't care. <laughs> We don't care about where they're going, right? I mean, that, the, <laughs> how well that works out. I mean, yeah. we, we do when we wish people well, but we don't care about the success necessarily of the organization they're going to. That's not our, our, 
our challenge or place to weigh in on. But the, the risk of making it too easy to come back, and this is the one downside that I think of um, for, for me personally is in this scenario is it does that set the wrong tone and create the wrong perception internally where you know, were the organizations you know, potentially viewed as a revolving door where you can leave and come, you know, you can come and go as you please. Um, and I think that is a dangerous path to go down where you don't want your employees thinking, well, if, you know, I can, uh, you know, this, this, it would co- create, it would cause them to value the, jo- the job that they're in less if they thought yeah, that it so. was, yeah, of course. I mean, whether okay. it's conscious or not, but if you look at it in terms of relationship, and I always make this the relationship analogy, if you knew that you could leave your marriage and go try out, um, you know, uh, not being married for a week or two or we'll a pass. couple months and then come <laughs> back, <laughs> you know, whatever, that would be indication that you didn't value your marriage very much. Fair? Uh, that, that, is, that is very fair. Right. <laughs> so that, there's fair. a slippery, <laughs> the slippery slope where um, the, the role itself could be viewed the same way. If you could just leave and come back, well, how, how important, how committed are you to the role Um if you view it as as something that you can um, you know leave whenever you want and then come back, so that that's the part that I don't like. But you, you seem skeptical of that of that premise. Well, it's a little bit. Here's why, because I've 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 actually have experience in that. Two jobs ago, when I was at the call center up in a, in a Lake Mary, we had a point where um, our team managers were leaving like in groves, leaving, leaving, leaving. Within nine to ten months. No, actually, no, 10 months to a year, 95% of them came back. They came back. Now, this organization was in a part of, uh, of it's a, it was in a city where it was a five-mile radius where there were five other call centers, so we always competed for the same talent, right? It, it's, I call the call center Mecca. And we competed for the same talent. So people went here, went there, went there, went here. And what my team noticed is that when people started to come back, other people started saying, Man, I guess it's 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 not as bad as it here as people make it out to be, and it became a motivational thing for some people who thought they wanted to leave. They saw like, man, if this A player left and came back, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm sticking right here. Okay, all right. I've I seen like that. that work as well. Now that's been my experience. I'm not saying that is the go-to formula, but that's what I saw five years ago. Yeah, I mean that that. I like that. That that makes sense. So um, I have to think about that one for a minute because you're you're taking what I'm viewing as a potential negative and and describing it as a as a positive. We I think saw it, it as a positive, man. We saw it as a positive. People who we thought were going to leave are not not leaving because other people left and came back, and they didn't want to disrupt their families that way. Yeah, um, that makes sense. I, I like it. So I mean, I'm generally inclined, as you can probably tell by now, to I'm trying to think through all the, the sides of this, you know, one more um, negative is that uh, the person who left, depending on how long they were gone, is not necessarily the person you're getting back. And you may Ooh. not know that either. So yeah. you, 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 it's probably natural to take that for granted. But um, depending on the time experience, we know people evolve and change <laughs> without it, it, you know, too much time passing necessarily. Then it may not be that guaranteed win yeah a player may come back as a c player depending on so that's a good point (laughs) that's a good point and this is why it's crucial to still do an interview then because otherwise how are you going to know it's very easy not to conduct an interview for somebody you know for obvious reasons right but that's a good point you bring up what if the person left something else happened and you get back a completely different bob right what do you do you do have to continue you do have to interview i would think now to be honest, Pete, that would be hard for me to do. If I know somebody, why am I gonna conduct an interview? Just, just, just me, just personal Ricky talking, right? Professional Ricky's like, nah, we should. We don't know what happened over at that other company. We go see in social media how they run their ship, and I don't know what kind of attitude this person has now. Hopefully, they left it over there and don't bring it back over here. We will never know unless we conduct an actual interview, which just sounds redundant and it sounds like it doesn't make sense for somebody you already know, but. You, so those red flags, if they're present, they'll be really visible if you actually do conduct one. I think that requires a lot of discipline. That yeah, it does. <laughs> it, depending on the organization, depending on who's involved, 
Um, yeah, it, because that's that's the hard road to take is to say, nope, we're not going to make a quick decision on this. Mm-hmm. We're going to put this person through the same process. But I think it gives you a much higher, you know, without, you know, if you if you did it a hundred times, it's going to increase your your chance of success. You know, ninety nine percent of them, wh- whatever whatever that outcome might be. Um, yeah. And I, I think where possible, it you, just like that individual who left may have changed, the organization itself could have changed uh, in that time frame if there's new managers involved, new peers that this wow. person would be working with. So you shouldn't take that for granted either. So I'm glad you brought that up. I think it's a really good point to consider in this um, scenario is well, just because this person was an A or B, even a C player under the manager they worked for when they left, if they're coming back reporting to someone else, could be an entirely different situation. Let me ask you this. So I, this one just came to my head. Let's say the person you left, the person that left, we thought was an A player. Yep. We thought they were. Once they're gone and we start, I guess, doing their work, we find out what in the world? They didn't know what they were doing. They were actually a D player. How would you handle that? I mean, I guess you would handle the same situation as a D and an F player, yes, right? Yes, I, I, think, I think that would be their final grade. <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right. Yeah, it, it's, I asked on my own question right when I was asking it. You know, my, right. my, my high school sophomore has uh, finals coming up, and, mm-hmm. and it's one of those things where it, it's there's a you know, two quarters that make up the semester, and those two quarters are worth you know, 40% um, of the grade each quarter, to, combining for 80%, and then the exam itself is worth 20 So it's really hard to move your grade up with that exam, but you can really hurt it. So I think that's <laughs> as you were talking and, and this is all taking place in the next week or two with my, sure. with my sophomore and uh, I'm thinking, yeah, if that, that would be your final exam is yeah. what do we think about you after we see either the mess you left behind or the great work you were doing, which we may not have even realized because you were introverted, didn't toot your own horn. Maybe someone else was taking credit for for your um, for your work, and, and the organization didn't realize it. But I do think the true indication of how good an employee was or not, it, you know, takes place within the first couple weeks after they've left. And I can give lots of examples on both sides of that. Um, you know, surprises, yeah. pleasant, and otherwise. So that's a great point to bring up. I think that's that's the way you grade them at the end. You would, and and I like. I'm I'm actually going to steal that from you. I'm going to use the A B C D E F <laughs> of um, um thing for for people coming back. But you know what? Let me let me talk. It's if it's okay with you, I want to talk directly to the the organizations who bring somebody in, and maybe have a an inkling the person is going to go back, right? Because you want to stop that. You want to plug that hole. You want to make sure you stop that bleeding before it becomes a big issue. So if you are a business leader, a business owner who are thinking about that, when somebody comes on board, you know, really start to build a relationship with that employee. And I know that's hard to do when you have hundreds of employees, right? But the person who's going to be the direct manager of that employee, start building a relationship. Not when they start work, not when they do orientation, when they start applying for the position. That's, in my opinion, that's when onboarding starts when they apply. And when they apply, you build that relationship, you get to understand why they left their previous job. They're not going to tell you that at first, right? But after some time trying to build that relationship, they're going to start giving you clues as to why they left. Keep that in the back of your mind. Because if the reason they left their previous job, start seeing start manifesting in the current job, they're going to leave you. (laughs) They're going to leave you. (laughs) Right? So think about that understand that and try to figure out a way how to make that person feel more welcome than normal that way they don't leave you now if you got to pull out like a, 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 a trick a rabbit out of a hat and bring out the circus ponies out then you may have to redo the whole thing right because that's not fair for you to do that for one employee and not the others right something sure. wrong with the system and, and from that perspective for everybody listening just make sure when people come on board fully understand what their value and what they left and hopefully you won't replicate that and you save them from leaving you in the future well i you know it, as you're talking i'm thinking a complimentary episode and maybe what we should do next week is talk about counter offers because that is you know the predecessor of this where um if you 
if when is someone is deciding to leave, you know, doing an exit interview, we um, and and really understanding why, as you alluded to earlier, I want to know why they're leaving. I want to know why they're coming back, but yeah. I I want to capture as much information as I can on their way out the door, which should play a big part as the point you were making earlier in whether we consider bringing them back in. But yeah, that counter offer may be. Um, you know, the game changer in between these two things. So let's, let's, let's talk about that next week. That's my favorite subject. I'm going to stay quiet because I don't want to give anything away. Okay. Well, we, we will, <laughs> we'll just know Ricky will be ready to explode when I'm it comes up. Ready. I don't, and I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> so I want to hear it live. It you, does that make you nervous? Does that go like, Oh God, what's he going to say in now? general or with you in particular? <laughs> Both. <laughs> you in particular, it. maybe in general. No, typically not. <laughs> Um, okay, so, <laughs> so in conclusion, I don't know that we reached one. I think we did. Did we? So I think we did. the answer is definitively, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> That's definite A, definite B, eh, maybe C's. Assuming that, 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 they, they exited stage left in the right manner. That is correct. That, that, ha- that has to be, you know, number one. Right. And, um, yeah, I think I think it'd be it'd be crazy not to if you if they were good when they left and you 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 like you suggested, which is such a good idea and important in this. You go through all the conversations that you would with this person off the street. There, I had to get in one more time. Um, then you know, and you and you have no reason to think you wouldn't like them as much as you did before, and they can't add the wouldn't add the value that they did before. Then by all means, you know. Don't don't be foolish. <laughs> Bring them back, and uh, and and you know, and everyone wins in that scenario. That's right, that's right. But and do your due diligence, right? Just because you know them doesn't mean they get to bypass everything. Because you wanna, you don't know what happened. Now, if it's been a couple of weeks, ugh, I mean, <laughs> what happened there? But if it's been a couple of years, a lot can happen in a few years, right? So right. it'll be a good idea for you to come back, do some do take in a chilies or something. That's what I do. <laughs> take a little chilies for interviews. That's why I gain so much weight, man. I'm always <laughs> having conversations at a restaurant. Too, Fast too, food, by the way. <laughs> too, too, uh, too many chips and, and unlimited queso <laughs> refills. Baby, 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 baby back ribs. Or that too. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Well, let's let's wrap this up and yes, say that um, you know, consider all the options. Hopefully this has been helpful. As always, we would love to uh, hear any feedback that you have. So please uh, email us, hirecalling at fourcornerresources.com. We'd love to hear from you. And the link and contact information will be in the show notes. So if you haven't already, subscribe and rate us. Five stars would be great, right? That's the only rating we want, isn't it? That's the only rating. Anything below five stars just does not exist. Just do five stars and you're good. And uh, thanks and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, folks. Have a good one. Good night.